Good morning, everyone. Ardrum Harris here from ePathetic.com. I hope uh, everyone is doing well. Uh, in this video, I want to provide my feedback on the Minister Louis Farrakhan's uh, address, the July 4th address, the Criterion. Now, let me first say from the outset that I love uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan. Uh, growing up uh, as a child um, in my neighborhood, the Nation of Islam was there. Uh, many of my friends uh, were and still are uh, Muslims. I've traveled the world. I spent um, many months in Tangier, Morocco, and met Muslims there and in uh, other countries. So I'm not against. Muslims, as I stated, I love Minister Louis Farrakhan. I appreciate his message. The things he says about America are true. If you are a black man who's lived in America, you've experienced America uh, as a black man, as a black person. You know this. If you're white, it's going to be very difficult for you to appreciate what it feels like to to be black in America. There are many things that you're going to be naturally blinded by. So what he says about America is true. Now myself, uh, I'm a veteran. I'm a U.S. Air Force veteran of uh, 20 years. And uh, after leaving military service, I entered into the federal government for more than 22 years. Served... Uh, seven of those years as a foreign service officer. I've lived many of my years overseas. But as a veteran, I feel cheated because I feel that my service to this country of the United States of America wasn't for me, and it wasn't for the benefit of, uh, of my people. Others benefit from my service. So it's as if my service has been stolen, as if I have been bamboozled. So what Minister Louis Farrakhan says about the United States of America, uh, I am in large measure in agreement with. Uh, many people today are pulling down Confederate statues and what I see largely on television and even with the, the bill um, protesting, what I see largely with all of that are white protesters yet it will be black people who will, who will bear the brunt of what they're doing. If, you, if there are white protesters pulling down these statues and monuments, it is not going to, to be associated with them doing it. It's going to be associated with black people doing it. And I think it's wrong for uh, the black nationalist cause, for, for, rather for white protesters to usurp the cause of, of uh, of, and struggle of black people. And that's what has really occurred right before our very eyes. And a uh, classic example, if if a white man, for example, is, uh, is pushed by the police, see, that's going to be the news, more so than what's happened to black folks and what has been happening for black folks for many hundreds of years in this country. The cause of black Americans has been cleverly usurped. Now, Rather than going off into that tangent, I want to move back over to uh, my uh, feedback on the Brother Minister Farrakhan's uh, 4th of July address, the Criterion. Now, if you've listened to um, Minister Farrakhan in the past and even now, a large, in large measure, his message is primarily targeted toward the United States of America. Now, he's a Muslim. He is a man of deep conviction. So my my issue, my problem, is not with the nation of Islam. My issue is why is the focus on the United States of America? Persons who are, say, Muslims and those who are Christians, you would know that nothing that stands on the surface of the ground is forever. If you know your prophecy, if you've read the Bible, then you know that uh, there existed a world back in Noah's day. Well, is that world 
with us today? No. The earth is still here. But the world of Noah's day was destroyed. Uh, the world of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was here at one time. It was destroyed. So worlds come and go. But the earth, which belongs to God as he created the heavens and the earth, the earth itself belongs to God and it itself will stand forever. The earth itself will never be destroyed. It's the things that we put upon God's earth are things that will be destroyed. So, if you know your history, we recall that uh, Adolf Hitler envisioned uh, a kingdom, let's call it that, a kingdom of a thousand years on the earth. It didn't happen. So the Hitler regime was there for a time being and then it died out. It's no longer there. So what makes one think that the United States of America or any nation will be here forever? That red, white, and blue, uh, its its days are numbered like, like we're numbered. As individuals, we have a time when we're born and we have a time when we die. And so yet yeah, there's this um, thing where people believe that the countries in which they live will endure forever. They won't. They will be destroyed, all of them. All of the nations will go. So what is occurring right now on the earth? It's much bigger than the United States. So the, the problem, well, I shouldn't say the problem, the issue I have with Brother Minister Farrakhan's message, that, uh, uh, that part of it, is his focus on the United States rather than the focus being upon the entire world prophetically. If you read from the book of Daniel, the prophet Daniel states at Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, that in those days God will set up a kingdom that will crush and put an end to all of the other existing kingdoms. And it itself, that is God's kingdom, it will endure forever. So all of the nations today, including the United States, have already been judged for destruction. They have been targeted for termination, each and every nation. So listen to Brother Minister Farrakhan. The implication is that the United States is the only cancer on the planet. It's not the only cancer. It's all of the nations. All of the nations have been guilty of crimes against the human family, whether they were complicit in them or not. Now, if we recall, uh, more than 2,000 years ago, there was a man, and the world knows him as uh, Jesus. And he was out in the wilderness, and who approaches him at his weakest point? It was the devil. What did the devil offer Jesus? He offered Jesus all of the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Jesus refused that offer. And uh, the devil said, look, if you worship me, I'll give you all these things. So if the devil could offer Jesus all the kingdoms of the world, then what is that saying about who is the owner of all the kingdoms? The devil himself. Jesus never checked Satan's hand and said, wait, wait, you can't give me what is not yours. Jesus never said that. Jesus simply replied, you must worship God alone. And only him you will worship. So the kingdoms of the world today belong to the devil. Not the earth. The world today this world belongs to the devil. If you read from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, that's what we're told. Depending on the Bible translation that you read, it states that uh, Satan is the, uh, the uh, god of this age. All the Bible translations read that he's the god of this world, of this world, not the earth. One must separate earth from world. Genesis states that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. 
it is men who create worlds and those worlds have no permanence and a part of this world are things such as countries nations it's their educational systems it's educational systems uh, the military complexes corporations religion number one religion uh, all of the religions are born out of this world you see when God sent his special son his only begotten son that is the one that he created directly uh, he wasn't dispatched into the world of mankind to establish religion Jesus never spoke of anything called Christianity men do that God dispatched his son into the world of mankind to establish a brotherhood you see religions divide brotherhoods do not see religions have different titles you have entire religious systems Christianity Islam Judaism Buddhism Hinduism and the list goes on and on and within those you have different denominations and sects right those things divide I've had individuals approach me and they want to debate religion I'm not gonna be debating religion with anyone that's foolish God did not dispatch his son into the world of mankind to establish religion those are the things that men themselves did don't put that on God whatever name you call God don't put that on him men have done that that's why we have a world so full of religion yet it's a very dangerous place to live you would think that would not be the case how can we have a world so full of religion and religious people and yet it is a hateful and dangerous place to live it is divided religion divides you've got christians fighting against muslims and muslims fighting against christians you got christians fighting against christians muslims fighting against muslims those things weren't born out of a world that jesus said that his king those things weren't, weren't born out of above they were born out of a world that Jesus said that his kingdom is no part of and I read that at John chapter 18 verse 36 so when I listen to brother Mr. Farrakhan and yes I call him brother because we do share commonalities as a black as a black man in the United States it is much bigger than the United States. The United States is going to go. It's going to be here today and gone tomorrow, like all of the nations. And I point you right back to Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. That all of the nations must go. What makes anyone think that things are going to continue as they are right now? The nations, the inhabitants of the earth, have been bad tenants. What do you do with bad tenants? You evict them. God is not going to allow men to continue for any length of time on his timetable to continue ruining his earth. God still has a purpose for this earth. There is a seventh day that has not been completed yet. So why would God allow man to continue to pollute the air and the water? Uh, to bomb and destroy when his purpose for the earth from the very beginning has not been fulfilled yet of the six each of the six creative days God said at the end of each one and the evening and the morning is the first second third fourth fifth sixth day as to the seventh day he hasn't said that yet why is that because we are in the seventh day now walk we'll well into the seventh day and let me state here too that we are not in the last days. We haven't seen anything yet. Now I know there are a lot of young people right now who are listening to me and they may have watched uh, Mr. Farrakhan's uh, video. And I listen to a lot of these young people and they don't get it. See, you're living in a time period now where you're seeing bad things happen. You should step back a little bit and think that far worse things have occurred before you were born. Did you know that more than 200 million people died 
in the Spanish influenza. And there were other plagues where more than 50 million people died. And there was a country, a nation, Japan, had two atomic bombs dropped on them. And they're still feeling the effects, the generations rather, are still feeling the effects of what happened those many years ago. Imagine that you were there and you were the recipients of those bombs. What a terrifying sight that would be. So we need to stop being so selfish and stop and, and thinking that every time something affects the United States of America, primarily, that that's it. The United States is only one fish in a much larger sea of mankind. All of the nations must go. All of the nations have a timestamp on them for termination. That includes the United States. When I listen to the political leaders, especially the presidents of the United States speak, they have, they're not humble. They speak of God out of one corner of their mouth, but on the other corner of their mouth, they blaspheme, they blaspheme God by saying things like, God bless America. And really, no one else is what they're really saying. That America is the greatest country in the world, as if God has somehow sanctioned the United States of America. Here's a news flash for you. God does not show favoritism to any nation. Not even what many call the nation of Israel. God has no special favorite nation. God favors individuals who are within those nations who come out in a spiritual sense and they sit before his throne and they worship him. Worship to God must be in a spiritual manner. So one can sit before God's throne, not in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense. And Jesus spoke about this at John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. There Jesus says that God is spirit. And those who worship him must he didn't say maybe, must worship him with spirit and truth. What is a spirit? A spirit is invisible. You can't see a spirit. A good example is, uh, can you see uh, the air or the wind? No. Can you see the words coming out of my mouth? No. But my words are spirits. They're invisible. God is spirit. He is invisible. He has no flesh and blood substance to him. The ascended Christ is also spirit. He's no longer flesh and blood. In fact, when he was dispatched out of heaven in the beginning, he wasn't dispatched out of heaven as a flesh and blood creature. He became that when he was born through a woman Mary. And thus, when he ascended, he simply returned back to the form that he was in when he was initially dispatched out of heaven into the world of mankind. So to paint a bigger picture here, I listened to, to Minister Louis Farrakhan, and my concern here is that many people are going to be blindsided because their thinking is not big enough. It is not the United States of America that one should be concerned about. It is a much bigger world. And the population of the world today, 7.7 .7 billion people, are not prepared for what is coming upon the earth in future days. Right now, what's happening right now? It's nothing compared to what is going to come. And what is that? Destruction. The world has to die. The world today is sick. It is cursed. And I know that many people don't want to hear this, but all of us must die. That's the curse that God pronounced upon the first man. Recall in the Garden of Eden, when God commanded the man the woman wasn't around yet. It was just the man. And God told him with regards to those two trees in the middle of the garden. One of those trees was a tree of life. The other tree was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or good and bad. And God said you can eat from every tree in the garden except for the one. Not to eat from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and bad because in the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. 
and what happened. If you fast forward, uh, God made the woman from the man's rib. That's another story. It's, that's really deep as well. But now the woman's on the scene, and she's in front of this tree. And the serpent is in this tree as well. And she's carrying on a conversation with the serpent. And the serpent says, uh, yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna die. I know what God told you, but you're not gonna die. God's just afraid you're gonna become like him and your eyes are gonna be open. So what did the woman do? The woman ate from that the fruit from that tree. Now what she ate was not a literal fruit. It wasn't an apple. You won't read that in the book of Genesis. The fruit that the woman ate was the fruit of lips. Yeah, the fruit of lips. Spirit. So when the serpent spoke, what he spoke was fruit from his lips. When the woman listened to the serpent, that's her eating. See, that's a spiritual exchange there. And so the act of listening was the act of eating. So now the woman has this knowledge that the serpent dispensed to her from this tree of knowledge of good and bad and now she carries it over to her husband and she begins to regurgitate or speak what she learned from the serpent now she's speaking and her husband is listening he didn't reject what she said he listened to her so therefore he ate he knew better because God told him that if you eat you will surely die so what a fast forward what happened God pronounced a curse upon uh, our first parents, and so we die. What pushes us into the grave? This, this covering that we have. Because because if you re recall, if you read in Genesis, we're told there that uh, God, that the man was hiding, they were hiding themselves in the, in, in the, in the, in the bushes, and God calls out to them and says, hey, where are you? And why are you hiding? And they say, because, you know, we're naked. And God says, who told you you were naked? In what sense were the first men and women naked? They didn't have any cover. They didn't have any skin. They were invisible. So God made his coverings of the skin for them. God didn't go out and slaughter any animals to make woolly covers for them. No. He fashioned this skin this covering that we have is what pushes us into the grave in fulfillment in what God told the man in the day that you eat from that tree the fruit of that tree you will surely die what does this covering this skin do it gets old it gets wrinkled it gets diseased and it pushes us into the grave we die we must die. So what's occurring right now? It's much bigger than the United States. Yet what Minister Louis Farrakhan is saying about what the United States has done with regards to black and brown people is true. It doesn't take him to say that. I think if you're, if you're a black man and you've experienced, or a black person and you've experienced America, you know this. So what he's speaking is not prophetic because it is not just the United States that's going down it's the entire world now that's prophetic read for yourself Daniel chapter 2 verse 44 these nations must all go they're all counter to God's purpose for his intention for what the earth is to be not like this Right now, we're living in a time period called the appointed times of the nations. So there is an allotted time in which the nations are allowed to do what they want to do. God has a hands-off policy. He is not going to intervene. He's not going to interfere, uh, interfere into the, the affairs of, of mankind. The appointed times of the nations. When that time period expires... And no one can tell you, no human being can tell you when that's going to expire. Only God knows that. Because he's the one who set the allotted time. 
It's not on our time period, it's on his time period. And when that occurs, then uh, other events must occur. And you can read about these those things on the eperfect.com website. But they lead to, in the end, uh, better days, the conclusion of the seventh day, and better things for all of us. All the things that we're witnessing right now and experiencing right now will be things of the past, and they will be things long forgotten. But it is important that all of you know where we stand at present, in this present time period. People will come, and they will speak grandiose words, and they will be very convincing words. But there is a commandment given by God at Luke chapter 9 verse 35 and this is the most high God speaking and giving this command he says this is my son he's referring to the one that he sent listen to him out of all the prophets and all those who claim they are prophets and sent by God God has authorized one as his spokesman as God's word as the word of God. No one else. Not Minister Farrakhan or anyone else. No. So we must be careful. Listen to those persons, sure. But always keep in perspective a much bigger picture with regards to the things that are going to occur on the earth and what must occur on the earth. The United States is nothing with regards to um, what God's purpose is for the earth. And it's for that reason many people will be caught off guard, blindsided, thinking that this is going to happen when something else happened. How, how many of you thought that there'd be something like a coronavirus that would cross your mind? Tomorrow, a large heavenly body could be headed toward the earth and they can't we have no, no defenses against it that can take us out. We just don't know. So, it is important, as Jesus directed and commanded, that we keep on the watch because we do not know when his return is going to happen. And you can read this at... Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, and Acts chapter 1, verse 7. Okay, so uh, that's my take. And again, um, I love Minister Farrakhan. I do believe that he is sick, and um, he's uh, in his 80s, I believe. And um, that's what happens. We, we grow old, and we get sick, and we expire. So that doesn't make him special doesn't make me special, doesn't make you special. That's just a curse that has been pronounced upon all of us. Even Minister Farrakhan. So, uh, peace be upon him. And um, I pray that no harm comes to him. But I also ask my black brothers and sisters to exercise sobriety here. You've got to think bigger. Don't get locked into this narrative that it's all about the United States and the United States being punished for its sins against black people. It is the earth, it is this world itself that has been in opposition to God's purpose because God's purpose is not for us to be hating one another and be divided among one another. We're all brothers and sisters. You see. So that's it for this presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave your feedback. This is Arthur Jerome Harris. Thank you for listening.